Timers are pretty useful, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can make a timer that counts up, counts down, has a limit, and how to display the time in different formats. All right, so I have this empty 2D Unity project here, and the first thing I want to do is actually get a text object on the screen for the UI. And maybe you don't actually want to display it in your game, but for this purpose, I'm going to show it. Uh, and to do that, you can right click on the hierarchy and go to UI, Text, Text Mesh Pro, or you can use the regular text object, but Text Mesh Pro is a better quality. And when you select that, it'll ask you to import the essentials, which we will. And so now we have this text in the middle of our screen on a canvas. And I'm just going to make this auto-sized and drag it out a little bit. Maybe center it quick. Yeah, this is fine for me. Obviously, put yours where you want it. We're going to right-click on the hierarchy again and create an empty game object. And I'll call this Timer Manager. This could also be like a game manager or something like that. But this is fine for me. And then I'm going to create a new C Sharp script by right clicking on my assets folder, go to create new script, and we'll just call this timer. We'll then click and drag our timer and make sure that we attach it to our time manager game object. And let's go ahead and open that script up. Making a timer is actually incredibly easy. And so the first things we want to do is create a variable per usual. But before we do that, let's actually import text mesh pro. So at the top, we'll say using TM pro. And that way it just makes it easier so that when we make our first variable, we could say public text mesh pro UGUI, which is the component we need for our text object. And I'll just call this timer text. And let's go ahead and format our inspectors so things are a little cleaner as we add more stuff to this later on. So we'll open a square bracket and say header, and then open parentheses. And in string quotations, we'll call this component. And then under our text mesh pro object, what we can do is make another header and call this timer settings. And under this header, we'll make a variable. We'll say public float current time. And just to start, this is going to be the bare basics of what we need. But there's one more thing I want to do at this point. So we have this current time object, and presumably we're either going to want to increase it or decrease it. You know, there's realistic, practical use cases for both. And in that case, let's go ahead and actually add a flag or a bool here to determine which one we want to be doing. So I'll just say public bool count down. You could also do count up, but I'll do it from this perspective. By default, countdown will be false, so we'll be counting up naturally. And in my opinion, that makes more sense, but you know, you can do count up, it's whatever you want. And then we'll scroll down to our update function. And in here, what we want to do is tell our current time to increase or decrease based on the flag we set. And so this may confuse you if you're just learning C Sharp for the first time or you're pretty new, but you know, bear with me, I'll go through it and explain it. But we're gonna do a ternary operator. So what we could say is current time is equal to, if countdown is true, then what we want to do is current time minus equals time dot delta time, right? So we'll be decreasing our time if we're counting down. Otherwise, if we're counting up or countdown is false, then we want to say current time plus equals time dot delta time. All right, so this may look pretty confusing if you've never seen this before, but really all we're saying is if this is true, then we want to do this block of code. If countdown is false, then we want to do this block of code. And this block of code is literally just adding or minusing time.delta time to current time. So it's pretty straightforward. And then once we actually make the change to our current time, we just want to render it to the text. So we can say timer text dot text is equal to current time dot to string. And then if we click on our time manager, we can look in our script that we have this component section. So we can click and drag this text, text mesh pro, and I'll actually rename this to timer text. And we can click and drag timer text into the component. The current time starting at zero. And if we play the game, you'll see that it's increasing. And if I set countdown to true, we'll see that it's decreasing. So it's working as expected. And we're gonna deal with the format for this later on, so just bear with me for now. But you know, if you only wanted this to be like whole numbers or one or two decimal places, just hang in there. All right, so that was easy enough. Let's go ahead and set a limit to our timer, right? Like let's say you wanted to only count up to five or you wanted to count down to zero. Let's go ahead and implement how that would be done. So I'm gonna make another header here. And in the strings, we'll say limit settings. We'll make a public bool that's called has limit. And then we'll say public float timer limit. Okay, so back in our update method, we now want to implement some sort of logic for implementing a limit, right? We have these two new variables. Let's go ahead and use them. 
So in, after we set our time, what we want to do is a check to say, hey, do we have a limit enabled? And if we do, like, are we over or below the limit? Depending on, you know, if we're going up or down. And so to do that check, what we want to say is if we have a limit, so if has limit, and this is going to be a messy condition here, but bear with me. So for counting down, right, so we're going down, and our current time is less than or equal to our time limit, or we're not counting down, we're counting up, and our current time is greater than or equal to our timer limit, then we want to do some block of code, right? So if has limit is checked, we just want to basically see if we're decreasing, if we go below our limit, and if we're increasing, then we go above our limit. We just want to basically stop, right? And so what we want to do in here is we'll say current time is equal to timer limit. We'll cap it off at the limit. We'd want to set the text again. I'm actually going to make a private method quick and just say void set timer text. And in this new private function, I'm just going to move where we set our timer text down into there because we're probably going to call this in multiple places. So we'll say set timer text up here. You could set the timer text dot color maybe to red just so we know what's going on. And then we could set enabled for this component equal to false. So this stops running. And at the bottom, in case we don't have a limit set, we still want to update our timer text, right? So we say set timer text at the bottom. Now, I know that was a little bit to cover, but it's pretty straightforward, right? So let's say we set a timer limit to two. And we're going to be counting up, and we have a limit. When we play now, it should go one, two, and then it gets capped off, and it turns red. And now we're not counting anymore. Conversely, let's say our current time is two, we have a limit, and our timer limit's set to zero, and we set countdown enabled. We can count down from two and stop at zero, which is great. This is already a timer and a stopwatch built into one component in basically like 10 lines of code or less. It's not bad. Now, the one glaring issue is we have so many decimal places being drawn right now, and so there's a lot of different ways you can format this. Uh, the easiest is basically saying in this two string method down here where we set the text and we're converting our float to a string, we could pass in, say, zero in string quotations. And that would only be whole numbers. And you could also add a decimal place and then, you know, let's say one more zero. And it'll only show the tenth spot. If you had another, it'd be hundredths and so on and so forth. But we actually want this to be somewhat configurable, right? That's what you should be doing with your components, make them configurable. And so I'm gonna show you one approach of doing this. Uh, underneath here, I'm gonna make a public enum and I'm gonna call this timer formats. And we'll just put a couple of them. I'll say whole, tenth decimal, and hundredths decimal. And we'll just do three for the example. Uh, up at the top, I'll make another header and call this format settings. We'll say public bool has format, because maybe we don't, maybe we don't care. We'll say public timer formats format. And lastly, we're going to make a private dictionary, where the key of the dictionary is going to be the timer formats, and the value is going to be a string. And so what we're basically going to do is say, if you've selected, say, the whole format, then we want to render out the value zero. So it's only whole numbers in that string method. And so we'll call this time formats and we'll initialize the dictionary. And then down in our start method, I'm actually gonna build out this dictionary. And this will make more sense as we go through it. So I'll say time formats dot add. And then for the key, we'll say timer formats dot whole. And for the value, we'll say zero. And then I'll duplicate that. We then wanna do tenth decimal and hundreds decimal. And then we want to do the respective formats. And I'll put a link in the description so you can see there's some documentation for like how these string formats actually work from a C-sharp perspective. Um, but for now, this is fine. And then the last thing we actually need to do is actually update our to string call here in set timer text. And so we're going to do another ternary operator here. We'll say if has format, then what we want to do is say current time dot to string which is what we were just doing before. But in here, what we want to say is time formats, which is the dictionary, with the key value of our current format that we set. 
Otherwise, if we don't have a format and we don't care, then we can just say current time dot to string, just like we were doing before. And we'll save that off. So now we have this new section on our timer script. We can set has format to true. And we also have this drop down with whole, tenth decimal, and hundredth decimal. So let's go ahead with whole. We're going to be counting up to three, and you'll see it only shows whole numbers. If we do tenth decimal, you'll see there's only one decimal place. And of course, if you do hundredths, then you get two. And you could increase this to whatever you want, do any formats you want, do different language formats, whatever. I think you guys get the point. But in like actually 30 lines of real code, you have a component that's nicely formatted in the inspector with a timer that has a lot of flexibility in what you can do. You can count up, you can count down, you can set limits, you can change the format. You could use this all over your game. There's a lot of cases this could be useful, like making a racing game, which is what I just covered in my last video. So if this video helped you out, please leave a like. It really helps the channel. If you have any troubles, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to help you out. And most importantly, subscribe to the channel.